Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to Healing School. This is Wednesday, July 28th in the evening and this is our Healing School uh, online message. I want to say welcome to any of our first time visitors or return visitors. Welcome back once again. Amen. We are going to open up in prayer and we're going to uh, jump into the scriptures. Father, we just thank you and we praise you. We thank you for this day that you have made, that you created. You created this day and you made it for us. And so, Father, we just thank you. We are grateful. We are thankful. We praise you because you do all things well. We thank you for time in your word that is able to save our souls. Amen. We thank you that our spirits are born again. We're new creatures in Christ, but there's still work to do. And we thank you that your word will do it. It will change us. It will restore us. It will revive us. It will renew our minds so that we can be transformed and prove what is your good and acceptable and perfect will. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Well, I do have some announcements to share. I'm going to share those with you as soon as I can pull them up on my uh, uh, iPad. Uh, first of all, tomorrow, tomorrow we are having the home going for our dear brother in the Lord, Greg Oliver. Praise God. He went home to be with the Lord. He decided to take off and and, and be with Jesus. He decided that um, he was no longer betwixt between two things, staying here with Rhonda and us, and he decided, I'd rather be with the Lord. And so his home going is at our church uh, tomorrow, 2323 Route 73 in Pensacola, New Jersey, which is Living Faith Christian Center. So he was one of our faithful members. He sang on our praise and worship team. So please keep his wife, Rhonda, in your prayers as well as the the whole the entire Oliver family. So tomorrow his viewing is uh, from 9:30 to 11. Then the service, the homegoing service, begins at uh, 11 a.m. All right, and it'll be right right there at our church our church home. Also, we're of course we're in the midst of our well not in the midst we're uh, we're today is 29 days but we were. Uh, these past 29 days, we've been in the midst of a 30-day healing challenge. So that is uh, obviously one of our topics. Our children's church, I'm, I'm excited to announce that our children's church will resume in the month of August for grades 1 through 6 only. There'll still be no nursery uh, and for toddlers, but uh, we will have uh, grades 1 through 6 We'll resume children's church, the children's ministry for our one grades one through six um, children. Okay, other gr age groups they will come at a later date. Uh, we are going to also resume or start back with our in-service Holy Communion. We're going to partake of communion uh, in service. We'll have disposable cups with the the stored cracker on top of it, and we'll just when we come in we just grab. Uh, we just grab one of those communion sets from off of the table. That'll be in our, fo our foyer. It actually is this coming Sunday is our first uh, time. So I'm excited about that. We can take Holy Communion together once again. Also, the men's ministry is hosting a Zoom fellowship on Saturday, August 7th at 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. And the theme is Stronger Churches. The speaker is Pastor Roosevelt Taylor along with a guest panel and a musical guest, Ant Antoine, Antoine Milton. Sorry about that, Antoine. I thought it was Anton. I think it's actually Anton Milton, but I could be wrong. <laughs> uh, from Empowerment Temple in Baltimore, Maryland. Also, our corporate prayer, baby dedications, and water baptism will resume uh, in the near future. Uh, baby dedications... Corporate prayer will begin September 11th. That's a Saturday. Baby dedications will start September 26th if there are babies to dedicate to the Lord. And water baptism will take place on November 14th. All right. Well, that's all of our hot topics. And uh, so we're going to get into the Word of God. I'm going to share some scriptures with you and some thoughts with you, observations 
Uh, obviously, the word of God is the most important. But Romans uh, 10 and verse 17, it says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And so that's why we have healing school every, uh, every month, uh, faithfully. Uh, healing is part of the gospel. Healing is part of our great commission in Mark chapter 16. Jesus told his disciples, he said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So uh, Jesus made it clear that not only was he interested in, in seeing people healed and minister healing, but he also wants us, his church, his body to also do the same. So if we're called to minister healing to people, of course, you don't uh, muzzle the ox that treads out the corn, as the scripture says. No, you give the ox something, the, the ox gets to feed off the, the very thing that it's treading out to, to harvest. And so uh, we are to be partakers of divine healing. You know, um, there are many things that we can take. There are many medications and drugs that are out here. Uh, but, you know, but we, all of those things have side effects. They have, they have one thing affects another and so on and so on and so on. And that's why we want to learn how to use the word of God as our medicine. That's what we take. So for the past 29 days, tomorrow makes 30 days. Uh, my, the title is called, if I didn't say it already, 30 day, 30 day healing challenge. Don't y'all, don't you quit on me. Don't you quit on me. We still have till tomorrow, until tomorrow, which will, uh, end or add up to 30 days. I'm not going to say end because we're going to keep going. This is, this is something that we have started. Um, it, it started out as a 30 day healing challenge, but it's something that, uh, it's a, uh, it's a practice that we should continue even after these 30 days are over. So don't you quit. Don't you quit. Don't you stop until you have received your healing. Amen. Praise God. Jesus already bought and paid for your healing, for my healing. And so we want to make sure that we get what Jesus suffered, bled, died for, we, we want to receive it all. Amen. Can somebody say, I want it all. Whatever Jesus bought and paid for for me, I want it all. And healing, divine healing is one of those things that we want. And so I had uh, uh, began this 30-day challenge 29 days ago. And one of I uh, gave two examples of two women of God who believe God for their, their healing. And it both both of them, the, the example of both of their testimonies was they got healed in 30 days. And I shared with you that the number 30, it means, it's, means acts of redemption. It means accomplishing priestly service. Amen. We are kings and priests unto God. Uh, number 30 also means ruling and reigning. And so as we've been speaking the word of God, as we've been prophesying, over our bodies, the word of God, we have been exercising our rule and reign in the kingdom of God. Amen. We have authority because Jesus already took care of it. We have authority over sickness and disease. Amen. I'm sure, uh, well, perhaps some of you didn't, but uh, a lot of you know that um, it'll be two weeks this coming Monday, but I busted up two of my toes, right? Uh, that was, a, um, you know, it's a long story, but I, I, my big toe got stuck in my wide leg pants and I, I fell. Um, and so, um, and so of course the x-rays, you, they, you know, they pointed out some couple things. And according to the x-ray, my, my big toe and the toe next to it is broken. Amen. I'm glad it wasn't my right hand because <laughs> I'm right-handed. We need both of our feet, though. You find out how important both of your feet are. Uh, but thank God we're not right-footed or left-footed. I broke my uh, broke my right the toes on my right toe. That's what the report says. But I found the Word of God. The Word of God is life to us and health to all our flesh. And when I open up my Bible to uh, to read. 
uh, and spend time in the Word, it opened up to Psalm 34, verses 29 and 30. Uh, I, I thought it was just just uh, delightful to me, but uh, Psalm, uh, 20, Psalm 34, verse 19, it says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. But verse 30 says, it says, He guards, He watches over all my bones, not one of them is broken. So I was like, aha, look, there's my verses for my toes. Now it takes at least six weeks for broken bones to heal. But I I don't I don't want to take six weeks. Thank God that our bodies can do that, have that ability. But if I'm already healed, I can believe God. We can believe God that the timing that that we can be healed since healing is already done. It's, it's already done. It's already it already belongs to us. You don't have to wait for something that already belongs to you. Do you know what I'm saying? You have to get it. You have to go get it, but it's already belongs to us. So I looked at that and I'm like, look, Lord, they say my toe, my toes are broken. And it, it may even look like you might say that God wasn't watching over my toes when I fell. Well, the Lord could say I wasn't watching where I was walking. <laughs> but um, and so so I'm standing on that scripture. So I touch my toes every day. I look at them and I say, to toes, you are healed in Jesus name. Not one of your bones are broken. And so that's what I've been confessing over my toes. So we find the we find the scriptures, we apply them to our situation, we apply them to our bodies, we apply them to our minds, so that that word, the word, Proverbs chapter four, it says that the word of God it tells you, my son, attend to my words, incline thine ear into my sayings, let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life to those that find them and health medicine, healing to all their flesh. He says, my word. He didn't say certain scriptures, uh, some scriptures. He said, my word is life to them that find them. When I opened up my book that day, I found the word of God, praise the Lord. And so I found that word and that word is uh, um, going to bring healing to my toes. Amen. Not one of my toes are broken. In Jesus name so I'm I'm believing God I'm putting myself out there actually uh, living faith family I'm putting myself out there I've already told you what I'm believing God for I don't have six weeks really I don't have time for to be walking around in this black hard shoe I need my feet I want to get around I want to you know I want to be free again and so anyway all right enough about my toes and so we used two examples, Lachey. There was a healing example in 30 days, a woman named Lachey. She was diagnosed with lymphoma. Her liver was 200 times the size of a normal liver. She got healed in 30 days. When she went back to that doctor after 30 days, they couldn't find her lymphoma and uh, her liver was normal. Amen. And so uh, then there was a woman named uh, Ann. I think her name is Ann. Yes, uh, Amy, I'm sorry. The story of Amy, the Lord himself. Now, Lachey had 30 days to live. So she was, some might say she was motivated. So we have to be motivated. The reason why we want to hear about the word of God regarding healing is that we want to find ourselves in a state where we're always motivated to be healed, to receive healing, amen, to the point that uh, the scriptures are our first line of defense, all right? And so, and that's not to say there's anything wrong with doctors or anything like that. I'm just saying that sometimes we could be in a situation, suppose you don't have medical insurance, right? Well, you still have the word of God. The word of God is life to you and health to all your flesh. So we, you know, we just take the word and, and the, uh, the other woman, Amy, God gave her, the Lord gave her a challenge. He said, I, I challenge you for 30 days, you shut off all other reports, all other voices, and you focus strictly on my word, you confess the, my word over your body, and you'll be healed. And that's exactly what she did uh, at, the, um, at the end of uh, 30 days, somewhere around the end of 30 days, she woke up in the morning, her husband said, what happened to your body? 
so her her body had changed because her spine had shifted, which was um, crooked or deformed, if you will, and she was had no more tumor in her body. So she had even lost weight. So her husband saw the difference in her body. So in both of those cases, those they were thirty days, and so that's what motivated me to do this thirty day challenge for healing. Amen. So have you has your body changed in the past thirty days? Well, I want to hear about it. Have you received complete healing in the past 29 days? Should I say tomorrow? We still, we still have tomorrow, praise the Lord. Today is 29. We still have uh, one more day to, to meet that 30-day challenge. Don't you give up on me. Don't you give up on the Word of God. I'm not giving up on the Word of God. Um, I, I'm, I'm standing on the promises of God. Amen. And so, uh, again, Romans 10, 17, it says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. I want to share with you some, some verses just for you to add to your, uh, you know, we have these uh, scripture healing cards. I'm sure this is probably backwards when I put this up here, but we have them available at church. I just underlined some ones that I may read if I have a chance, but these are available at uh, the church uh, up on our information board and so we've been confessing various healing scriptures uh, I, I have I hope you have and so we've been believing God for our healing that it is life to us and health medicine we got to take our medicine the word of God is medicine amen and God wants us to be healed and whole happy and at peace he doesn't want us on drugs amen and so he, he just wants us to be healthy because he bought and paid for it. He bought and paid for it for us to walk in divine health, right? All right, so I want us to look at, um, I, I want us to understand some things about the word of God and how we don't want to give up. Even if, if we don't see results within 30 days, we don't want to give up because the word of God is still doing its work, amen? Amen. We know that in Mark chapter 11, in Mark chapter 11, uh, if you have your Bibles, you can turn there. Mark chapter 11, when Jesus cursed the fig tree, uh, starting in verse 20, says, Now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree, now we, most of us, know the story about Jesus when he cursed the fig tree. He saw leaves on it. He walked up to it. There wasn't any figs. And he said, no man eat from you here hereafter. And, uh, and everybody heard it. His disciples heard it. Um, and so, uh, and so Peter, so Peter said, uh, or Jesus answered Peter after Peter recognized the fig tree, saw the fig tree, said it was cursed and is withered away. Verse 22, it says in, in Mark chapter 11, verse 22 says, So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not, double, does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. That's why. We can't go by what we see. Now, in, in these uh, scriptures, uh, it looks like verse 20, be, there's no gap between verse, verse 20 and 21. Um, actually, this is the one. Uh, uh, Matthew 21 says the tree, the, that the fig tree was cursed immediately. It began to die or that it withered away immediately. That's Matthew chapter 21, starting in verse 18. And so, um, you know, if you read those two accounts, it looks like they don't match. Um, I'm going to read that. Matthew 21, 21, if you have your Bible. Matthew 21, 21. And it says, uh, this is called the lesson of the withered fig tree. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, how long did the fig tree, or how did the fig tree wither away so soon? Now, Mark chapter 11 says that they saw it on the, um, on the morrow, that on the next day. 
But this says in verse 19, and seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves and said to it, let no fruit grow on you ever again. Immediately, the fig tree withered away. Now, we, we know from the two accounts in, in Matthew chapter 21 and Mark chapter 11 that the tree uh, did not wither away immediately in front of their eyes. But the point that I wanted to make, if you take uh, into account both stories, that what we need to learn is that when Jesus cursed the fig tree, that it, it immediately began to wither, whether they saw the physical manifestation right away or immediately or not. It's, it's, it's just that when we speak the word of God of healing, when we believe God for our healings and we confess the word of God over our bodies and, uh, um, and to, to take dominion over our sicknesses, we have to know that the, from the time that we put those words out, something is happening. So when Jesus cursed the fig tree, it says that it, it withered immediately. Now it could have said, if you read, put the two together and look at them, it could have said, and the fig tree began to wither away immediately because in Mark chapter 11, it says that it was cursed from the root, that it was cursed from the root. So you can't see roots, they're under the ground. So when we speak the word of God to our bodies, we don't see the root of the word that we've spoken, although we have clear evidence that the word of God is what we sow to receive our healing. And, um, and so Jesus, back to Mark 11, uh, Jesus told them, he said, look, don't be, don't be too amazed. I'm telling you, I'm going to read all the Amplified now. Truly, I tell you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt at all in his heart. We can't be doubting over these 30 days and beyond. We don't, we don't doubt. When we take the word of God, there should be no doubt involved. Amen. Does not doubt at all in his heart, but believes that what he says will take place. He will be, it will be done for him for, uh, and then he says, for this reason, I'm telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that is granted to you, and you will get it. What are you saying, Pastor Connie? I'm saying we cannot. I think I mentioned last week, we can't let the enemy tell us, well, look at, you, look at your foot. It's still black and blue. Look at your arm. It still has that rash on it. Look at your the, your blood test. It's still your... your um, insulin and glucose glucose levels are uh, still too high or too low you know so the devil wants to get us wrapped up in what we see but when they looked at that tree that day it had not changed although Matthew 21 says it it withered immediately but it it withered immediately in other words Jesus word took effect when we speak his word when we speak the word of God it begins to take effect immediately. And I'll probably come back to this next week because we're talking about, can your faith fail? And so we can do the same thing. So as we're speaking the word of God over our heart, over our kidneys, over our lungs, over our eyes, over our, our ears, over our immune system, you know, whatever it is that we're believing God for, when we speak that word, we have to believe that immediately that word starts to take place. Now, again, talking about, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I want to read to you Luke chapter 6 and verses, verse 17 through 19, okay? Now, this, this is, uh, my, my Bible entitles these three verses, uh, Jesus heals a great multitude. And in verse 17 of Luke chapter 6, it says, And he came down with them and stood on a level place with a crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear him and be healed of their diseases. I'm going to read that again. Who came to hear him. Hear who? To hear Jesus. Who came to hear him and be healed of their diseases. Why do we have healing school? 
because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Listen to this. So then faith comes. So when faith comes, we want it to stay. <laughs> faith comes by hearing the word of God. So why do we keep confessing the word of God? Pastor Connie, why do we have to keep doing this? Why do I have to speak the word of God over my body? Because faith comes by hearing. The Amy, the one who got healed in, in uh, 30 days when the Lord challenged her, she said that after a certain amount of days, that word started to take root in her and it started to af affect her belief, her belief system. So we want to keep faith with, with us. So, and they say that a person believes their own words more than they believe anybody else's words. That's why when we believe something negative, it happens quicker than, we're than when we're learning to confess something positive. I remember years ago, uh, you know, we have to be so careful in what we say, but we have faith in our words. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing what we're speaking. And so she would always say, yeah, when my uh, niece or nephew come over, they always break stuff, you know. And I said, well, maybe you should stop saying that. <laughs> and so she was like, oh, okay. And so she stopped saying, um, you know, after a time, she stopped saying, and I'm not talking about years because the child turned 15 and doesn't break things or knock things over. It didn't take that long, but uh, when she stops saying, every time my nephew comes over, he breaks something. Well, then he, he stopped breaking things. Stop the set things stopped getting broken. So, so it's, a, it's a unfortunate that lots of times we have more faith in what we confess that's negative than what we do and what's positive. So confessing the word of God, it takes practice. And so faith comes by hearing and if it comes, that means, that means that faith can go or faith can leave. So why do we continue to confess the word of God? We can con continue to confess, I'm a uh, tongue twister. We continue to confess the word of God so that faith can stay. Now, all right, so when we speak the word of God over our sickness and disease, over our abnormality, malfunction, or weakness, which is there, all three of them are, are sicknesses, right? And so, um, so we speak the word of God. We believe, we don't doubt in our heart at all, but we believe that what we say will come to pass. We shall have whatever we say. That's what Mark chapter 11 says. Now, Mark chapter, uh, Mark chapter five is the example of the woman with the issue of blood, if you remember her in Mark, in Mark chapter 5, verses 25 to 34. And so it explains that the woman um, that that she had said, she had said in the, the Amplified says, let me, let me read that. I don't want to misquote it. I want you to really get my point. So Mark chapter 5, I'm going to read it in, in the Amplified, I believe. Mark chapter 5, this is the woman with the issue of blood. Uh, Mark chapter 5, beginning in verse 25. And again, I'm giving you things to think about. I want you to hold on to your faith. I want you to keep confessing the word of God over your sickness and disease. If, if you haven't seen a manifestation of it yet, there, there's, I'm telling you, there's still, you know, it, it, things can change overnight. Remember, Amy, she woke up and everything that she had been confessing and believing God for, it had been, it was done when she woke up. Um, and so, but she didn't lose her confession of faith. And it says in verse 25 of Mark five, now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. Am I talking to anybody right now? You've been to the doctors and they can't help you. And as a matter of fact, your condition is getting worse. It's not getting better. Verse 27, when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. Remember, we're talking about faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When she, had, when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, the Amplified Version says, for she kept saying, if I only touch. For 30 days, we have been kept saying <laughs> We have been continuing to say, 
Uh, for she kept saying, if I only touch his garments, I shall be restored to health. Verse 29, and immediately her flow of blood was dried up and the source, and suddenly she felt in her body that she was healed of her distressing ailments. Now, I wrote a couple of things down. We have no idea. We have no idea how long this woman had been saying. We don't know. When she heard about Jesus, how long ago it was that she heard about Jesus, we don't know. It doesn't say how long she had been saying. It can look like, if you don't read the Amplified, it could look like she heard about Jesus and then just immediately she hit the streets looking for Jesus. But we really don't know how long she had heard about Jesus and how long she had said and kept saying, if only, if I only touch his garments, I shall be restored. I know that what she heard, I do, what I do know, is because other people had touched Jesus' garments and received their healing. And so when she heard that, that uh, brought her faith and, it, and increased her faith because faith comes by hearing. And she kept saying, which brought faith to, she, her words brought faith to, her, to herself as well. So we have no idea how long this woman had been saying this. And we don't know how much time went by since she heard about Jesus. But the point that I'm saying, that I'm making out with this uh, woman with the issue of blood, is it says that, for she kept saying, if I only touch his garments, I shall be restored and back to health. If I just stand on the word of God, Believe God for these 30 days. I shall be healed of this kidney disease. I will be healed of this blood disease. I will be healed of this immune disease. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so this woman heard, and then finally it, it brought her the healing that she uh, wanted. And then it goes on to say that she felt when Jesus said, who touched me? Well, she knew what happened in her body because it was her body, and she had been feeling the, the issue of blood and, and the pain or suffering, whatever that was associated with it. And she received her healing. Amen. Uh, Luke chapter six and verses, um, Luke six, 17 through 19. Did I read that? <laughs> uh, Luke six. Let me see. Yes. They came to hear and to be healed to hear what? To, they came to hear, they had heard that Jesus went about healing all who were sick, sick and oppressed of the devil. Do you really think, now we have to realize that in Luke chapter 4, when uh, in verse 18, when Jesus, after he came back from being, uh, passing the temptation test in the wilderness, his, his, uh, his, uh, um, testing in the wilderness with, with the devil. And then he came back, he came to the synagogue and they handed him the, he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him, on Jesus. And he began to, and he began to say to them, Today, today, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Now, but that doesn't mean because he said today, this scripture is fulfilled what do you think Jesus preached when he went around preaching? He went around preaching the gospel, the good news. So when Jesus preached in, in Luke chapter 6, verses 17 through 19, it says the people came to hear and to be healed. Well, number one, they had heard, if you just listen to him, if you just listen to his good news, that you can be healed. So they came to hear and to be healed. Why? Because faith comes by hearing 
and hearing by the word of God or hearing the word of God, including the word of God coming out of our own mouths. And so this was not the last time. It was the first time Jesus preached this in Luke 4, 18, that the spirit of the Lord was upon him. So Jesus went around preaching that he was anointed to do all of these things, that he was anointed to open the eyes of the blind, that he was anointed to cast out devils, that he was anointed to heal every sickness and every disease among man, that he, he preached that he was anointed to heal the lame and the maimed, people that had missing body parts, people who were um, disabled, he was anointed. That's what he preached. And when he preached that, it, it raised people's faith level and they got healed. What we are doing right now, applying the word, the medicine to our bodies, applying it over our sicknesses and diseases, we are receiving of the good news of the gospel. And we are receiving faith every time we speak those words over our body. Do you understand? Do you see what I'm saying? And so we can't give up. We can't quit. We can't quit. We, we have to believe God. Amen. Luke 5, 17, it, it says, uh, it says, and it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching. This is talking about Jesus. Jesus taught, he preached, and he healed. Those are the three main things that he did. He would preach the gospel, teach the kingdom, preach the kingdom, and he healed. And Luke 5, 17, again, it says, And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching. And it says that the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Why was the power of the Lord present to heal them? Now, it explains that at that time, it appears that the only person that we can tell from this account in Luke chapter 5 and verse 17, it looks like the only one that got healed was the paralytic man, the paralyzed man that, that who that, whose friends brought him down through a roof and a house, and he got healed. Jesus told him, uh, you're forgiven of all your sins, and, and he told him to pick up his bed and walk. He told him, your sins are forgiven and you're healed. Look. When we got saved, we got healed, y'all. When we got saved, we got healed because sickness and disease came in. Sin opened the door to sickness and disease. We have to get that, and I'm going to end in a couple minutes. We have to understand that sin, when Adam and Eve sinned, when they disobeyed God, it messed up everything. And sin, death came by sin. Now, sickness, you have to realize that sickness and disease, you know, some kills you. But sickness and disease is really limited death. It's limited death. It might not take you out of here, but it can sure kill your job, kill your occupation, kill your joy. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so, uh, and so we have to... Um, uh, just not tolerate it. Get to a point where we just don't tolerate sickness and disease at all. So stick to your words. Stick to your scriptures. All Whatever scriptures you've been confessing over your body, don't give up. I'm believing God that none of my bones are broken. The x-ray says they're, they're broken. So now I don't say, I'll say something else. I'll say the x-ray say that my toes are broken. But from that day on, when I read, found that scripture a week ago from tomorrow, that none of my bones are broken, that God guards over all my bones and none of them are broken, that is what I'm st standing on. That's the only thing that I'm confessing over my feet. I'll refer to a report. I can refer to what they said. I can even talk about what they look like. They look like still, they still look a little banged up. They've improved. But I'm speaking that none of my bones are broken, that my toes are healed. Amen. And so, so faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Proverbs chapter 4, starting in verse 20, it says that the word of God is life to us and health to all our flesh. So it has to become a part of us. And so that's why we 
a, a teach healing school. That's why we teach on healing. That's why I teach. I've been called to teach as, as a pastor, as a minister of the gospel, and as a local church, not just me. This is, this is, uh, this is to be our church culture. As a matter of fact, with that being said, if there's any visitors that are, uh, if you're watching on this, uh, on this online service, if, 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 if you don't know anybody that believes in divine healing, if you don't believe uh, or know anybody that believes in the laying on of hands in Mark chapter 16 that it talks about, look, you can, you can come to our Sunday service at 10 a.m. every Sunday at 2323 Route 73 in Pensacola, New Jersey. It's not, I'm sorry, excuse me, Pensacola. It's, um, it's very near Cinnamonson. It's right next to Cherry Hill. So if you want to know, if you've never heard of Pensacola, but you can stop by. You are welcome to stop by our church services at 10 a.m. And after service, if you want me to lay hands on you and, or pray for any sickness or disease, I will do it. Amen because that's what we are called to do. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, so don't y'all quit on me. Don't you quit. More importantly, don't you quit on the word. Don't quit on the word. S stick to your gun. Stick to that faith. Amen. Remember Mark chapter 4, it explains the word of God as a seed. And, it, and it, so it starts as a seed. So when we started 29 days ago, that word started as a seed. We're waiting for the full manifestation. We're waiting for a harvest on what we've believe been believing God for. Amen. So please let me know, Living Faith uh, family, let me know if you've noticed some improvement in your body um, or if, you've, if you have been healed of your condition, I want you to tell me about that on Sunday, okay? I want to hear about it. I want to know what God is doing, amen, in your life. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you. We praise you. Father, we thank you that we are going to see the end of our faith because your word is reliable and your word is medicine, healing, health, to all of our flesh. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. You know, I wanted to share uh, in 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 17. I'm sorry, it's uh, it's time for tithes and offerings. If this is Wednesday online service, if you want to uh, present your tithes tonight, you know, a tithe is, uh, tithing is worship. Giving is worship because we do it as unto God. And um, I just wanted to remind you in 1 Kings chapter 17, it talks about the, the, uh, the widow of Zarephath that, that um, God sent uh, Elijah to. Um, and um, this is Elijah, uh, J-A-H, E-L-I-J-A-H, Elijah. And so this is after God has sustained Elijah at the brook. And then he said, I, I want you to go to Zarephath because I've... I've commanded a woman, widow woman, to sustain you. And so the story goes on that uh, uh, Elijah, he left the brook Cherith, and he went to Zarephath as the Lord instructed him. And he saw a woman who was gathering sticks. And she told him, she said, um, she said in verse 12, uh, she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar, and see, I'm gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare for myself and my son that we may eat and die. Now, look, this was a drastic uh, example of life. Maybe you, you are just distressed over your finances, and I just wanted to encourage you. Uh, Elijah, in verse 13, uh, he, and he said to her, do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me. Elijah was the man of God. He was the prophet of God. He was the mouthpiece of God. When he was telling this woman to make a cake for me first, he was t telling her, instructing her what the Lord had instructed him to tell her 
But what we need to see is the importance of putting God first. And so when he told her to make me a cake, the man of God, because I speak the word of God, and this is the word of the Lord to make me a cake first. So I am comparing that to uh, Malachi chapter 3 and Leviticus when it tells us to present the tithe to the Lord. Jesus, uh, the, uh, the Lord said in Malachi chapter 3, he said, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, right? And so God is saying, look, you put me first. Jesus told us to seek first the kingdom of God. In other words, put the kingdom of God first and all things are going to improve and work out fine in your life. And so, of course, she did what he said. And he told her, uh, he told her, if you do this, that your oil and your meal will not run out until this drought is over. And so she did it. She followed the instructions. And so God provided for her as she put the man of God, the, the, the mouthpiece of God first. When you in, in those days, if you did what a prophet said, you were doing what the Lord said because they spoke for the Lord. And so she did that. And so if you're being challenged financially right now in any kind of way or being challenged in your provisions, I would, I would um, encourage you to just put God first. Keep tithing. Keep giving, even no matter how small your giving is. If you sow a seed into the kingdom of God, if you put God first and tithe off of all of your increase, God promises that I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. I don't know. Sometimes we don't know what got us into this mess, but we can know that obedience will get us out of it. And we can just repent even if we don't know what we did, did to get us into this mess. We just say, Lord, I, I repent whatever I did wrong. If I did something that got me in this predicament or this situation, I repent. And now I just put you first and do what you say to do. So uh, God wants you to increase. He doesn't want any of your provisions to run out. He wants to, you to be provided for. And not only was she provided for, for her and her son, but she sustained Elisha for, uh, it says if you read this and it says for a, a time, however, uh, for many days, they, I've read that that could mean a year. And so, but anyway, we know it was at least until the drought was over, as the word of the Lord said. So, so uh, there's three ways to give. You can give online by going to lfccnj.com forward slash giving. You can also give by texting to give by texting LFCCNJ to um, 77977. You can also mail your tithes and offerings to 2323 Route 73 in Pensacola, New Jersey, 08110. All the information will be given to you under this video. If you're not subscribed, you can subscribe to our, our YouTube channel and then click uh, for it to be notified when this video uh, uh, is available. Amen. So Father, we just thank you and we praise you. We have been, we're obedient to present you with the tithe and bring an offering. Father, we thank you that our cruise of oil will not run out and neither will our meal. We will always have more than enough. We thank you. We praise you. We declare that the windows of heaven are open over our lives because your word says it and we are tithers and givers. Amen. Please refer to the beginning of this video for all of our updates and hot topics. Again, if you're a visitor here online, please stop by our, our church anytime on Sunday at 10 a.m. Amen. Well, I call you blessed, happy, fortunate, empowered to prosper, and to be envied because God already declared it. So if you're in agreement with that, say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Amen. Praise God. Love you.